Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of On Attachment. In today's episode, we're talking all about resentment and what to do if you're feeling resentful in your relationship. So I think that resentment is unfortunately extremely common in relationships. And while it doesn't always you know, mean that there's something wrong, like we might experience moments of resentment in an otherwise healthy and secure relationship, if resentment is a really common occurrence for you. It's something that you feel a lot of the time and maybe you felt it in every relationship you've ever had or it's a big part of your life to feel resentful, then it is definitely something that we want to get a bit curious about and understand a little more because as we'll talk about today, there's a lot to be learned about the situation and about your response to a situation by interrogating in a gentle way what's going on for us when we're harboring a lot of resentment towards a partner. And you know, I should say, even as I'm saying this, it's not only something that we can experience in a romantic relationship. So if you're feeling resentful in other areas of your life towards a family member, a friend, a, a co-worker, a boss, there is much to be gained from understanding what is really going on for you there and what you might be able to do about it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before I dive into that, a reminder that my Secure Self Challenge is kicking off in less than two weeks. We've already got over 50 people signed up and would absolutely love for you to join us if you are someone who's interested in learning more about building the pillars of security within yourself, self-worth. It's a 28-day challenge uh, and each week is themed around one of those pillars. So we go self-compassion, self-care, self-respect and self-trust. It's not specific to any attachment style. It's very much a welcoming space for all uh, and there's a strong community focus. So last time there was a very vibrant uh, online community and you know, people really connected with one another and were hugely supportive of each other's shares and insights and it was really such a beautiful thing for me to witness everyone really thriving and, and growing in community together. And so if you're interested in joining early bird pricing is available for the next 48 hours, definitely encourage you to check it out. Would love to see you there. It's one of my most affordable offers and yeah, I would love to see you there. So definitely go check it out if you're interested. Okay. So let's dive into this conversation around resentment. As I said in the introduction, I think that there's a lot to be learned when we experience resentment in a relationship. I think there's a very specific kind of feeling tone to resentment and it's this sense of, you know, internal frustration and kind of victimhood, powerlessness, this sense that someone is doing something or not doing something to us and you know, we have this anger and frustration towards them, but there's this really internal experience to resentment. I think that those of us who struggle with directly articulating needs or boundaries or requests, giving feedback, maybe those of us who are conflict averse, who tend towards keeping the peace rather than you know getting everything out in the open, advocating for ourselves. I think if you fall into that bucket, that type of person, then you're probably more susceptible to struggling with resentment than is someone who is very direct. And as soon as they're bothered by something, they raise it. There is this internal harboring of stories and as I said, like victimhood and this sense of being aggrieved by someone, but that there's nothing that you can do about it. And so you just sort of stew on it internally. Now, as I'm saying that, I'm sure the vast majority of people will have had some experience of resentment. And so you can probably recall that feeling and you know how icky it is in your body, how toxic it is in a relational context to have all of that kind of bubbling under the surface. I really like the analogy, not just in the context of resentment, but more broadly in relationships of a pane of glass. If there was a pane of glass between us, how clean or grubby is that pane of glass with the metaphor kind of meaning that if the glass is really clean, then everything's good. The channels of communication are open. You're feeling really connected. But if the glass is really dirty, grubby, there's, there's marks all over it. You can't really see each other. Then that's maybe pointing to there being things that need addressing in the relationship. And I think resentment is something that makes the glass pretty murky, pretty grubby. And so I think that we do need to really reflect on you know, what resentment does to a relationship. And I think one of the tricky things about it is when we're in this mindset of 
feeling really resentful towards someone, it typically goes hand in hand with feeling powerless. And I think that's one of the key things that we can take away from a feeling of resentment that we can really learn from it is that we've given away our power or we've placed that outside of ourselves. And we're really focusing on the things that other people are doing, whether that's to us or that they're not doing that we think they should be doing. And we're feeling judgmental of them about it. But we've generally placed our happiness, our well-being, our sense of empowerment outside of ourselves. And then we're feeling really sorry for ourselves and kind of salty about the fact that someone's not playing by the rules that we've created. And as I alluded to, oftentimes these are unspoken rules, just expectations that we have of how things should be, how people should act. And then we stew on that when it doesn't all go to plan. So I should pause there and say, this is not about you know, giving other people a free pass. It's not about saying that someone's behavior, if it is, you know, not okay, and that will look different in all different circumstances. So I'm not going to fill in the blanks for you on what, you know, good and bad behavior is because, you know, outside of very clear, bright lines, we all have different tolerances for different behaviors and that's okay. It's about figuring out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So it's not about, if you're feeling resentful of someone's behavior, me saying to you that that's a really good sign that there's work for you to do there is not to say their behavior is actually fine and they can carry on doing whatever they want because it's your problem, not theirs. <laughs> I think that when we flip flop between that very like binary dualistic thinking of, well, who's at fault here, that's really missing the point. And, and what we want to be doing is stepping outside of that framework altogether where we're trying to find the bad guy and actually just going, okay, what's within my control? Uh, what is my part in this? What can I take responsibility for? What can I take ownership over? And I think generally in shifting into that frame of mind, we realize we have a lot more choice than we otherwise did. When we're in that victim mode, when we're in a lot of fear, we typically feel like we have no choice and no options. And that only exacerbates our sense of powerlessness and fear and anger and resentment because we think that someone else has trapped us in an unfulfilling situation, life, relationship, whatever it might be. So it's not about excusing their behavior. It's not about saying like, actually, you have no reason to feel resentful or pissed off because it's all on your shoulders. But it is about going, okay, where have I maybe not respected myself here? Where have I not advocated for myself? Where have I not set a boundary? Where have I not said the thing that needs to be said? Where have I not stated a need? What have I done to contribute to the status quo here, which is leaving me feeling resentful? Okay. Can you see the distinction there? It's not about excusing the behavior, but it is about looking at our part in the creation of the, the bigger situation or dynamic, because it is very, very rare. I would say almost never happens that one person has no role whatsoever and is just totally passive. And the other is the sole creator of a situation. And I would argue that being totally passive is playing a role in and of itself. So recognizing that oftentimes when we're struggling with feelings of resentment, it is because we have not said something and it comes back, as I said, to that thing of we're keeping it all inside and then feeling really angry and bitter about it. So if you're feeling resentful, there's often something that has been neglected, that is being unsaid, that is being swept under the rug, that maybe you are avoiding. And, you know, there can be really understandable reasons for avoiding difficult conversations, difficult topics, for confronting someone, asking them for an honest response to a question that you're scared to ask. All of these things can be daunting. And I really do understand and have sympathy for that. But at the same time, your peace does not come from collapsing into resentment and powerlessness and victimhood. I really promise you that. So if you are feeling resentful about something, really reflect on you know, how have I contributed to this? What am I not saying? <laughs> what am I not doing for myself? Because maybe you have said something. I know a lot of people might be thinking, I did tell them what I needed or I did set the boundary and they're still doing this or they're still not doing that. Uh, and so now I just feel so exasperated and fed up and overwhelmed and at my wits end because I feel like I've done my part and they're not playing along. So what am I meant to do now? Again, it's that feeling of like having exhausted all of your options and then blaming them for the fact that you're feeling powerless. Again, I really understand this. I relate to it, but 
there's still a lot of story in that and there's still, you know, a lot of blame and projection in that. And that's actually good news because it means that there's more choice and there's more agency in the situation than you realize. So shifting out of that mindset and just putting it to one side for a second and going, okay, is that really true that I don't have any other options? That it's all on them and my happiness resides in their behavior, whether they choose to do something or not, how they show up, how they behave towards me gets to determine whether or not I'm happy and at peace in my life. That's a really skewed way of being. And for a lot of us, that's all we've ever known. So it might be a bit like, well, what, what else am I meant to do? Right. That's, that's just reality for me is that my sense of well being, my sense of happiness is determined by what my partner does or what are the people that are close to me, how they behave and recognizing the kind of codependent patterns that can exist in that, this sense of, I have to control your behavior or influence your behavior in order for me to feel okay, because those things are so inextricably linked in my, in my mind, in my body. So reflecting on that, reflecting on what is my role here? What can I give to myself? How can I kind of take the situation back into my own hands? How can I create a sense of empowerment? How can I prioritize my own well-being here rather than outsourcing that to someone else and then resenting them for not doing what I want them to do and really shifting back into that kind of internal leadership role where you are in the driver's seat of your own experience rather than being in the passenger seat of someone else's and blaming them for going in the wrong direction. So I hope that that's given you something to think about. I know that that might feel easier said than done and it certainly is. All of this stuff is easier said than done, but it's such an important thing to reflect on when we have these patterns of you know, feeling really at the mercy of someone else in our relationships. As I said, for a lot of us, that's just so normal that we don't know any other way, but it's actually not healthy to feel that way. And so starting to shift out of that, and it's not about becoming indifferent to someone else. It's not, as I said, saying that like they can just do whatever and I'm going to be unaffected by it, but it's recognizing that you can take really good care of yourself. And that'll mean a lot of different things. It's deciding how near or far you want to be to someone else's behavior if that behavior is causing you hurt and pain but just allowing yourself to stay stuck and then being resentful that nothing's changing or that someone's continuing to do something or hasn't started doing the thing that they said they were going to do it's not a nice place to be it's not good for your health your well-being your sanity again speaking from experience I know what that feels like so my invitation to you is really to almost imagine you're taking off a really heavy cloak and go, oh, I'm going to take off that cloak of resentment and just see what else might exist here, what other possibilities exist here, whether it's a conversation that needs to be had, whether it's some steps you need to take for yourself, some space and time away, or just a shift in focus and mindset. Um, just see what becomes possible when you consciously decide to shift gears away from that mode of, of resentment, of stuckness, of disempowerment, because because I promise you there's a lot more to be gained on the other side of that than there is by swirling around in that pool of resentment. Okay. I hope that that has given you something to think about. I hope it's been helpful as always. So grateful for those of you who leave reviews and ratings. I do read every single one of them and they always bring a smile to my face. Always so touched by all of the people that tune in and finding some solace in the podcast. So thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks guys.